Welcome to Andros Island Bonefish Club. There are few places in the fishing world where so many bonefish can be found. Large bonefish of over 10 pounds are frequently seen, and four to six pound bones are the norm. The island's vast network of flats offer unlimited choices for both boat fishing and waiting guests. The staff is friendly, the food terrific, and the fishing fantastic. Andros, the largest and least populated island in the Bahamas, is reached by a short hop from Nassau or a direct one-hour flight from Miami. The lodge is located on the east side of the island, right on the Atlantic Ocean. Anglers fish from Dolphin Flats boats, which access the more than 1,000 square miles of flats in the area. So vast, you rarely see another person during a fishing day. Fishing guests arrive by plane in Andros Town. There you are met by a taxi provided by the lodge and driven about a half hour to the club where you're greeted by the manager and staff. Our group from Boston arrived in January, leaving cold and blowing snow behind for a week at this great place. Ready for a drink? Yes, yes. You got it. two actually would be good. Accommodations are in spacious air-conditioned double cabins with full baths, with plenty of room for all your tackle and belongings. The native guides are all highly skilled at flats fishing. Each one has been personally trained by Rupert Leiden, owner and founder of the club. Rupert is a big man, friendly and strong. His keen eye for detail has been developed during years of spotting wary bonefish. In addition to poling a skiff all day, Rupert oversees the operation of the club and frequently entertains dinner guests with the rasping sounds of a saw in rhythm with recorded island music. A special place with a special man. Your made to order breakfast starts at 6.30 a.m. After breakfast, you can cock your own sandwiches for lunch and choose cold drinks that are packed on ice to be put on board for the day's fishing. Guides and boats are ready to go early each morning for a full day of fishing. Sunblock is necessary for protection from the sun, and Polaroid sunglasses a must to help locate fish. Depending upon the area chosen to fish, the boat rides vary from 10 minutes to over one hour. This place is really big. The enormity and solitude is awesome. Your journey to the uninhabited west side, a trip of over one hour, takes you through the bites to fantastic flats which are over 60 miles long. Throughout the bites themselves, thousands of acres of shallows offer unlimited opportunities. Due to the soft mud bottom found throughout the west side, fishing is done from a pole skiff. This enables anglers to cover more water and isolate and hunt bigger fish. As calm winds promise a very exciting day, angler Bob Benson and Rupert are in to fish immediately. Is that far enough, Rupert? Yeah, that's okay. Yep, go to the left a little bit, and shorter. Right there. That should do it. Strip, long strip, it's got it. Look at the school of fish out there, Rupert, with them. Yeah, and they're far in the school. But you are now to our most favorite spot in the world, the last resort. Right. Now you see a strip? There he is. Well, how do you like it? Oh, it's unbelievable. What a bunch of fish. 
You know, I've done a, a Barber's Cove. Barber's Cove? Yep. She break a, she she break record just on her husband landed sixty eight bone fish in one day. My God. What's you got there? A little baby whale? <laughs> a baby whale. They're tough, aren't they? Oh god, yes. Pound for pound, they are the hardest fighting fish in the world. They seem to be, don't they? Sure is. I don't think there's any question about it. Well, today you'll turn the agony of defeat into thrill of victory. <laughs> The thrill was indeed wonderful. As Rupert pulled us along this wilderness, we were awed by the beauty of the place. Nowhere on this west side is there any indication of human interference. There is no habitation, no litter, no pollution. Just mile after mile of the way things have been for centuries. As we caught and released a dozen bonefish that day, we wondered what our friends from Boston were doing. Was this just an exceptional day? Or can one really have fishing this good? These fellows are competing in an Orvis-sponsored tournament, and the competition is keen. We, had, we have good news and bad news. Uh-oh. The good news is uh, that we got 15 fish and one permit, 15 bones, one permit. The, uh, the largest bone boated was 24 and a half fork to nose, 28 and a half to, tip to nose. And Michael had a 12 pounder he had on, had to be 32, 33 inches. And Rupert said it was probably 12 pounds. Uh, he had it on for about 25 minutes, got it within 10 feet of the boat, and snapped. Snapped it or spat the hook? Snap. So what's the no, biggest fish know. was about 24, a little more than 24 inches. That's like, what mine Anyhow, it was great. It was great fishing. We were, there were probably of 16 fish. I would say, what, five of them, or five of them were small, and the rest were all 23, 24 inches. 22, 23, 24 inches, <laughs> which, uh, which was great. Um, we fished Moxie Creek and the Middle Bite, and uh, we waited where we were with you at the beginning of the day. Where we waited was Big Wood Key. Conk fritters abound, and along with cocktails from the full-service bar, the fishermen relax on the patio before dinner. Delicious meals are served at 7 p.m. and feature local fish, lobster specialties, meats, and vegetables, along with tasty desserts. There are great soups, salads, and chowders as well, so no one goes away hungry. Sunrise viewed from the deck is often spectacular as guides prepare the boats and anxious fishermen are eager to head out. To some, the early departure takes adjustment. Because I've been getting a bell every morning that goes ding, ding, ding. I, th I thought that only happened before you went to the office. You're right, Bob, and it also happens down here in Hendro's town. You can come on vacation and have some lunatic banging on your door before dawn to tell you to get out of bed and you have to pay for it. <laughs> As the boats leave the dock, it's hard to imagine winter at home. The temperature, even at this hour, is warm, and as you speed along, you wonder how you could possibly think of spending only a few days here. A month seems much more desirable. On the east side of Andros are miles of white sand flats as well as beaches from which to stalk bonefish. The hard bottom flats are ideal for wading. Sight casting to tailing fish that can be approached without alarm by quietly wading along is terrific. With tails flashing in the morning sun, multiple hookups and releases are possible. It's easy to spot the tailing fish moving along with the tide and leading them with the cast puts the fly right in their path. The opportunities for the wading fishermen are indeed impressive. There are hundreds of keys throughout the bites that offer wading along the mangrove-lined islands. Bonefish sometimes cruise these shallows, too thin for boat travel, and anglers fishing up close and personal will be rewarded by short casts to less spooky targets. Thank you. 
Yes. He's right with the school. School's coming in now. Many anglers consider the bonefish one of the most worthy of fly rod opponents. There were many times I waited amongst the fish here, literally a rod tip away. The shallower the water, the spookier they become. This makes it more exciting. I've seen them spook each other here, just splashing in the water. Their behavior is like a wary trout, and delicate casts and close approach are essential. So I've doubled up a foot and a half of wire. Well, Hubert's catching bonefish behind me. He just got one, and I think three quarters of the way out, it, the line went limp, and we think Mr. Shaka took that. So I'm gonna haywire twist a big loop here. These sharks, when they get turned on, yeah. you drop a big fly on them. And if you're close enough and they're excited enough, they just kind of lift their head and inhale it. Oftentimes, they don't even see it. They sense it's there, but they can't get their mouth on it because they can't see that good. <laughs> They're blind. <laughs> They're blind. Uh. <laughs> Come on, baby. Take it. That's a big fish. After a half hour fight, both angler and fish are showing signs of tiring. It is not necessary and potentially very dangerous to handle these sharks, regardless of size. Brought alongside, this 125 pounder, over six feet long, is released by simply cutting the leader. 